All right, today I wanna to go over flash modifiers. We talked a little bit about how I shoot and we walked through a shoot that I had, but we had a lot of comments about flash modifiers, what people think is best, uh, the ways that they do it. And so I wanna go over all the different types of flash modifiers that I have used throughout my career and how they might be able to help you or the information that I have learned might help you guys get a little bit better quality of light when you're out shooting. So the first thing we'll go over is the flash. We are down here in my basement, uh, future studio as it's getting finished, so it might be a little echoey, but it is a lot more room. We are gonna talk about my flash first. This is my Godox AD400 Pro. It is a monolight. I do not like to use the more speed light centric style of shooting that's a little bit faster. I find that if you have it on your camera, it's a little bit too tall for me and I kind of bump it on things. I don't like the power of speed lights. The power of them tends to be a little bit underwhelming and you run through batteries a lot. You also, unless you have specific models, tend to be using a lot of double A's, which I also just don't like. So this guy gets the job done for me. I do want to get the AD600. I think it would be a little bit more powerful for a lot of the larger homes that I shoot. But by far and large, this is the best one I have ever used. So we will be talking about this. It does use the Bowens mounts on the front of it here. These little three pegs are what they called, are called a Bowens mount. And it's what I use because it tends to be more universally used in uh, different ways to set them up on light stands um, and a bunch of different modifiers and speed rings. That's why I like it. But with that out of the way, we'll talk about what I shot with first, which everybody was wondering about, which is this guy. This is a reflector housing. So if we take off this little disc, I'm not gonna remove the diffusion saw because it's a huge pain to get on. Um, once it's on, it doesn't come off, but it is just a silver reflector on the inside. You see these a lot with mono lights um, and they're pretty standard. Usually the bare flash is inside of them. Sometimes they can have something in the center here, but this is what I shot with for years. This has a diffusion sock on it and then it also has a plastic diffusion disc. The reason that I really like it is because when you take off this guy and you put on, set this guy here, and you put it on, it's pretty lightweight and pretty small, right? So we've got this guy able to sit on the floor like this, really, really nice. You can use it to bounce off, but I typically had my camera here and I was firing over the top of it just like this with the handle down, or you can hold on to the back of it, get it up here just like that. And just right over the camera, boom, fire. And that was how I shot for years. It is not the softest light in the world, um, but it isn't bad. It's better than a bare flash um, and it's better than firing off the ceiling because the problem that you have when you come back to like a window like this is that you're gonna get the reflection of everything behind you, right? when you fire it in a doorway, when you fire it on something like that. And here in Colorado, a lot of homes have reflective tint on the windows. And that tint can be very hard to shoot around, it can be very reflective, and it can be very, very hard in post to get right, especially when you're trying to do it at speed. So this guy, when it fires, this is all you see is this circle. It's just a white circle. There's not a huge pop of light splashing off something. There's not you illuminated. It's just a circle. So if I have it over here, fire it. I can just move it over here, fire it, one click with the remove tool, and it's gone. And that's why I really like that. Next, we will talk about this guy. This is what I started experimenting with. I used to shoot advertising, portraits, weddings, Lots of stuff for magazines, things like that. And I used soft boxes. This is the smallest one that I have. It is an Octabox. I like the Octaboxes versus the square ones. I find the square ones to be a little bit, I don't like the light as much. The different folds on here, I find tend to give a softer light. And this is a really, really nice one. But the problem with it was, is that you gotta have a speed ring with it. And then, as you can see, this one has kind of deformed a little bit because it got squished and it doesn't fit through doorways very well. It's also really hard if you come up to like a corner here to like get really high up because it bonks and then it's really long when you put it on this flash. It does produce far, far better quality of light though. And that's a big thing when it comes to 
uh, what we're trying to do and what my objective was in this. Yours might be different, but my objective was always to create softer light because the softer the light, the less hard the shadows, the easier it is when you do that luminosity or luminance blending. Um, and it just makes for a quicker thing in post and the quality of light is better. We all love really good quality light. And this makes just absolutely beautiful light. So I really liked it, but it was a huge pain. And you can't set it down with this thing on it, which I will put on here. Again, Bowen's mount, because love the speed of it, but look how big it is. And then you couldn't set it like this, and it's so large that when you'd set it down, it would tip, it was tip up, and it just was really awkward, right? And so I didn't like it for the speed and for the usability. And I would only use this in cases where we had like a really, really important shoot that needed just really high-end light. Uh, because this guy just can't be beat. And that led me to try and find the next guy, which we all know is the Orb, the Lantern. This is the Godox CS50D. This is my current one that I use, and I love this thing. This guy produces such beautiful quality of light. And I would say the same or better than my softbox. And the reason I say better, because I do think softboxes are great because they have more diffusion than this, but the reason I think for what we do, or what I do, it, that this produces better light is because this fills in every direction but backward, right? So it will fire, light will radiate off the top, it will come out this way, comes out this way, and on the bottom. And when you're shooting something like this, it's really easy to get in the corner here, hold it up, and it's gonna illuminate everything rather than just in front of it. You can also hold it up and it'll come out everywhere around it, which is also really nice. It also seems to be a lot more durable than my softbox. It still does have the metal or like steel, maybe not steel, but the metal posts inside, but it sets up really quick it spins, it's got a speed ring, it's really, really high quality. And outside of me being stupid with where I put it when I would take it out of my car, the durability on this guy really is top notch. Um, it is a little big. I'll put it on the light again so you guys can check it out and see what you think. But I really, uh, there we go. I do find that it's a lot better because I can hold it so many different ways. It's not really heavy, I can have it up here and my camera right down here, and it just, boom, fires. And because it goes everywhere, again, I don't have to worry about where I point it, so long as it's up above the camera, it's gonna give that perceived overhead light, which is what we like. I mean, we can really get into a lot of, kind of like the philosophies of flash and why you do what you do, why we light things the way we do, because we perceive all rooms in a house when we see them to have overhead lighting. Every way that we interact with interiors just about deals with light coming through the windows or deals with light coming overhead. And if we can mimic that with our flash, we can make it look more natural looking. It doesn't, it doesn't like kind of hit that part of the brain and make us go, something's wrong about that image because you've seen it. When something is lit incorrectly, it doesn't look right. Something about it looks off. And if you can mimic that, which is what is in architecture, when you're doing architecture, you are trying to mimic the overhead light in a color and brightness that you can control. We're not gonna get too far into that. That will be another video, but that's the idea. And this guy makes it really, really easy. Now, the one thing I don't have here that everybody talks about is the mag mod. Let me take this guy off here. Man. And we'll talk about the magma because I have used one for my speed light. And I want to preface this before we get into it with, I don't think that if you like a mag mod, if you use the mag mod, that you are wrong, that it is bad that you did, you got ripped off, you got sold. I don't think so. If it works for you and you get the light you want out of it, fantastic. But that being said, the MagMod is extraordinarily expensive for what it is. This will give you the same quality of light 
that the mag mod will give you. And this is less than $40 for the entire thing here. Granted the flash is not, but you don't get a flash with mag mod. You have to buy the reflector housing. Then you have to buy the attachment that goes onto it. And I believe there's one more thing you have to buy for it. I couldn't remember, but I priced it out and it's like a little over $200, some sub 300, somewhere in there, which is nuts to me because this thing that produces far better light and far higher quality light than the MagMod ever can is less than $70. And that includes the mount, which is wild to me. And you are paying for convenience. You absolutely are. But that soft front on it, I don't believe it looks like you can set it down. So you have to have it and carry it a different way, which means that it's not as good as this, which can be set down just like that, no matter what you do. You also have to remember that the light source that it is coming from, so in flash, and this is for people who don't know, if you do, great. The smaller the light source, the less soft the shadows will be and the less diffused the light will look. So you want to have something that is large. So the name of the game when you're trying to get high quality light is balancing how large of a soft box you can have versus the utility or the speed or whatever you need, that other factor. And for us, and for at least for me, I'm doing real estate, the speed is the big thing. Being able to maneuver through a house quickly and efficiently while still getting really high quality light is the name of the game. And if the magma does it for you, that's great, but it is a really tiny light source. So at best, it is going to look just like this. Single diffusion, it is a single diffusion on the dome. The other thing I don't know is how much light is lost because whenever you put anything in front of a light, you do lose a certain amount of power from that light. And if it is much more um, opaque than this or less opaque than this one. So the, the white dome is a little bit thicker. It might take more of the power away from it. So then you get less spread, you get less reach with your light. And that's something that you have to keep in mind. And again, if this works for you, fantastic. But this is the reason why when I looked at it, I won't use it because it is extremely expensive. I could buy four of those orbs or like 10 of these for the same price that I could get one of those mag mods for. And again, I don't think the quality of light is any better. You know, if maybe we get to a point where I'm like, hey, you know what? We're doing well enough on this channel that I'm gonna buy one just so I can show you guys what it is and give you my honest opinion because I've only ever used one for a speed light and I did not like it. It was really overpriced for what it was. It didn't make my light any better than using, honestly, using a bounce. It didn't make it any better than using a bounce flash. And I don't like using bounce for this, as we've talked about. So for me, it feels like you're paying for a brand name and you're, play, you're paying for like something that has really good marketing. And that's great for them. They're a product. I hope they make a lot of money doing it. They seem to be very successful. But again, I've seen a lot of Reddit posts too where they want you to get in their system, right? And, it, and I'm in the Bowen system. I'm in the Bowen's mount system, right? So it's the same thing. But the Bowen's mount has hundreds of different attachments from many different manufacturers, whereas the MagMod has one. It's from them. And it, that softbox, again, it, that might get you better light, but it doesn't get you better light than this double diffused Octabox right here. And this is cheaper than just one of those MagMod attachments. And I just, I don't, I don't see the value in it for me. So that is why anybody who's asking or recommending it, I don't mess with them because I just don't like them. I just don't feel like they are worth the price. But if they work for you, fantastic. That's all that matters because this is what works for me. I'm not right, I'm not wrong. You're not right, you're not wrong. This is just preference and how we do things. So that is all the flash modifiers that I have. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any comments, questions, concerns, leave them down below. We will discuss them. We'll go over them. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this helped. We'll see you guys on the next one.